Matthew Dickerson, Mayor of Dubbo, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be official now. I've got a number of things to ask you after all the committee meetings this week. Um, firstly, let's start with the Dubbo Leisure Aquatic Centre, Aquatic Leisure Centre, get it around the right way. Uh, finally, Council, I believe, have seen sense in looking at getting private management back in to run the pool at a cheaper rate than you blokes can run it. So there's a bit of history there, which you're well and truly aware of, with the old Dubbo City Council. And as far as I know, for probably 30 years or maybe more, that was run by private operators that were engaged. I came to Dubbo to help Michael Maguire, who was the private operator at the pool, uh, to help with swimming coaching. That's how I ended up in Dubbo. Wow, so what was that back in 1940 or so? Yeah, about then. <laughs> <laughs> so when was that? Uh, 1987. And there you go. So and then I got a, uh, I was working for the ABC at the time, then I got a, um, uh, a scholarship to go overseas. But I did come back to Dubbo at the end, very end of 1988 and um, started at 2DU at the very end of 1988 after getting the flick from the ABC. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> so we know there's, you know, in the, in the vicinity of 30 years or so, and I don't know how long it was before that. So it had, had a long history of being contracted out. Mm. And it makes sense because when you've got council running something that operates for six months of the year, it makes it difficult to have your full-time staff engaged with exactly. that. Exactly. So having a contractor. So for whatever reason, after the amalgamation, it was decided by the council that came along that rather than keep that continuing process of having it externally contracted out, they would bring it back internal and have council staff run it. Now, just to throw a bit of complication in there, you also had Wellington Pool and Geary Pool. Those two pools were traditionally run by Wellington Shire Council. Mm. So the idea was bring it all back in and run it in that way. This council, when we came along, we actually said we think we need to look at going external again. And we considered some information. Essentially, it was, let's give it, it was almost too late to do it at that time because you need time to get someone out there to actually put some tenders in, go through that process. So it was left to run for another year. That's occurred, another summer, if you like, that's occurred. And so now we've looked at those figures, analysed all the data, and we're now putting out a request for a proposal. So it's not a tender as such because we want a little bit of flexibility in there in terms of the way they might run it, but a request for a proposal. And that will be either to run Dubbo individually, Gear individually, Wellington individually, or any two of those pools or all three of those pools. Mm. So it could be a small private operator from one of those communities that thinks they can run it, or it could be a large national organisation that has a whole process of running pools. So we're basically open to the idea of individually each one being run separately or combining a couple or all three being run under one umbrella. Now that's, as you know, these are committee meetings, so that's not a resolution of council yet, but the strong recommendation from council was that there were a couple of councils who were against that and who wanted to keep it internally. Oh, but, dear me, why? Yeah. And again, that's what you've got. We've got democracy here, so everyone's entitled to their own yep. opinion there. There'll be a vote at council in two weeks' time if it goes forward from there. Then we'll go out to the community and say to the wider public and say, we want some proposals on who can run this and how they're going to run it and what they'll charge and all the rest of the yeah. process there. And, and also part of that will be the maintenance levels. We've actually put in our recommendation to council that they be responsible for amounts, say, under $2,000 for small amounts of maintenance for major infrastructure. So, for example, another heated pool in Dubbo, if that was to come to fruition, that would still be at council's expense rather than the operator's expense. Yeah, I mean, that's how it used to run uh, when I first came here. Uh, Oh, I've forgotten the amount, but it was probably still around about $2,000. So you painted the chairs and you um, fixed up the broken window and things like that. But the major things, uh, council looked after. And unfortunately, when the pools went internal, we lost a very, very good pool manager here in Dubbo. I'm hoping that person might think about, because he's still around, uh, to reapply. Because he ran that pool beautifully for about 15 years. Absolutely magnificent. Had the public on side, had council on side, it worked brilliantly. And then it was all ruined when everything went internal again. But however, um, it looks like back, back, things are back to what they should be. And that is excellent and a good move on your part. We're getting there. And I won't make any comment on any previous management because obviously there might be that same person might be 
put in an application, so we've got to make a decision in an unbiased way. So Gosh, I, I hope he does. I won't make any comment. No, on you can't. I understand, but I, I'm saying I hope that person does. I, I hope there are multiple applications coming yep. in because mm. the competition will give us the best outcome for the community. Yep. Mm. All right. The uh, other interesting one came out of committee meetings was the Macquarie Conservatorium of Music. Mm. And um, we have uh, an interesting situation there, I believe. We've got to find a home for them. And the con of us council to do that, uh, our council going to do it? Because I notice on the motion that's going through, uh, point D was do nothing. Well, that was that was the options, the various options available. There's four, yeah. A and you you said something there, just in, in your intro. We've got to find a home for them, and that's the interesting part, I suppose. The do you have to find a home for them? Does council have to do that? Well, that's exactly right. No, in the local government act, is there any reference to conservatories of music? The Conservatory of Music is a fantastic facility. All four of my kids have been through the con. They've all learned multiple instruments through the con. Very good facility for Dubbo. I think very important facility for it Dubbo. It must stay for Dubbo. Well, I think it would be fantastic for it to stay for Dubbo. Now, they received $400,000, $500,000 in the vicinity of that money from the state government to run the facility. What, each year? Each year, yep. If you look at the, the, the figures are published, they're an organisation that publishes all their figures publicly. Yep. So you've got that kind of money that you're talking about there. Uh, they've got over a million dollars sitting in the bank at the moment, as as we speak. And hang on, they've got a million bucks in the bank. Over a million dollars in the bank sitting there, and and they've been making good profits. They're, they're a very well run organisation. They've got a, a good board, a good manager there. Uh, basically, they've got a good operation. I think their profit for last year was in the vicinity of a hundred thousand dollars. The profit the year before was about one hundred and forty, hundred and fifty thousand dollars in that sort of vicinity. So it's a well run organisation. At the moment, they've got a very good situation where the Department of Education gives them their building for peppercorn rent, so a dollar a year. They've got to pay for the repairs and maintenance on that, which you wouldn't do if you're renting a, a building normally. So they're spending about $20,000 in repairs and maintenance. So if you like, the rental costs for somewhere are around the $20,000 mark. What they're hoping council can do for them is give them a council building at Peppercorn Rent and maybe even help them with the fit out of that particular building. There was a lot of debate about this last night at the council meeting. It was quite an interesting debate to sit in. One of the issues that some councillors had is that you've got an organisation that's successful financially, well done to them. Why is it the community's responsibility, i.e. council, the community's money, to go and fund them on an ongoing basis? Well, that's my question to you now. They've got a million in the bank. Uh, why can't they go out and uh, build a building? or get a developer to build a building for them yes, and rent it off them. whole range of options there. It seems Hang on, this radio station, we are a, a charitable organisation. We do have tax deductibility, but we are not-for-profit organisation like they are. We haven't got a million in the bank. We managed to stick up an aerial the other day. It's cost us an absolute bloody fortune, but we didn't ask council for any money. And that was part of the debate last night. Some councils are concerned if we... And let's say we go and give them a council building for a peppercorn rent. And we might be foregoing sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year in rent, which is money we can't put into potholes, for example. So if we took that money and gave it to that organisation, then DCFM knocks on our well, door. Well, I was going to say, um, I might uh, be knocking on your door, Mr Mayor, and saying, oi, um, we want, we want uh, more infrastructure, which we do. You, as you know, we've got a room at the back that's uh, empty at the moment. We want to fill that with infrastructure. Uh, we don't know where we're going to find the money for that this year. But anyway, I'll be coming and seeing you. And, and this is part of the issue in that debate we had last night is that many other organisations may then say, well, if you did it for the conservatorium, who already get over $400,000 a year from the state government, if you did it for them, for an organisation that's making over hundred grand a year that's got a million bucks in the bank, well, why aren't you doing it for me? We're not in as good a financial position, so surely you would do it for us as well. Mm. So that the recommendation finally from the committees last night, which is not a formal council resolution, but the recommendation was that if there is a building in the stock of council that's suitable for the con, there's a couple they've looked at, then we said to the CEO, then certainly lease that to the con at commercial rates. So basically still lease a building to them, but not at a peppercorn rent, at a commercial rate, the same as you would charge for any organisation. One would think the carpet court building next to the theatre would be a, a logical option. And that may well be an option. What we did say, in addition to that, was that to help do any fit out, to help them go forward, then we offered up to a half million dollar interest-free loan to be, be repaid over five years. So it gives them a hand to get That's into that enough. new building, mm -hmm. but not subsidising the rent. Now, there were some councillors last night who still talked about the idea of subsidising the rent. 
and one of the comments was made was that you could just do that for a short period of time. But I think once you subsidise the rent for a short period of time, you do it forever. And then there's an extra expense to council. Now, keep in mind, previously, this has not been an expense of council. No. So anything that we do, any rent we forego, any uh, subsidised rent, for example, we might do, or anything we do is an extra expense for council. And at the moment, every phone call, every email I get, or, or not everyone, but every day I'll get a phone call or an email about our roads. People want to spend money on our roads. And we had a situation at a previous council meeting where council said no to spending $25,000 on Boundary Road for fixing that. We just didn't have the budget to do that. And yet we're talking about spending, say, $70,000 a year on an organisation that's well-funded. That's got a million in the bank and makes 100 to 140 k a year. And that $70,000 we might give them in subsidised rent, for example, we could put that into fixing roads like Boundary Road. So if I was still your... Still your um, uh, Mayor, or still a councillor, I'd be on what I'd be saying to that. N O N O N O. So, this is the ongoing debate. So, in a fortnight's time, we're going to have a formal resolution as to what to do there. Again, let me stress they're an important part of the community and we're happy to do things for them to help them. But when it comes to our finances, the previous council we saw was very blase with finances and that $20.3 million <laughs> hole. I love, was... I love the way you say the previous council was very blase. I can think of other words about that previous council. Well, this council has shown... That Starts with C, but anyway. <laughs> this council has shown they're fiscally responsible and mm. giving money to an organisation, taking money away from other parts of the community is something that they will only do in extreme circumstances, I feel. Interesting debate coming up in the council uh, in a couple of weeks' time on that one. I agree. Uh, Matthew Dickerson is the Mayor of Dubbo. He's my special guest this morning, and it's 25 to 11. The building figures for March are appalling. Well, They're way, way down. Is it interest rates? Is it um, cost of living? Uh, is it uh, cutting into the March figures? Over the year, they're looking pretty good. I looked at December, not looking too bad. But are the interest rates cutting into the building figures? It's an interesting point because you're right. Over the year, we look like we'll have, on current projections, about 440 building approvals for the year. That's the highest we've ever had since the amalgamation, since the new council's formed. So it'll be a record for the new council. And even if you go back some of those pre-COVID years, you're probably almost doubling some of those figures. So that looks good for the year. Now, March, you're right, dropped down significantly. And you Half. Know, you never know. Half since September. Yeah, and you never know why. And this is the problem. Has it been interest rates? Has the Reserve Bank achieved what it wanted to achieve? Has it been a lack of land? Well, we've got a bit more land available now, so probably not. Has it been a lack of trade? It's so hard to get a tradesman at the moment. So I don't know is the, final, is the full answer. I don't actually know why those figures have dropped. There's no obvious yeah. indicator as to why, but it certainly is a concern that figures have dropped that much because we still have businesses who are screaming out for new employees and we still want to have people who move to Dubbo. Our citizenship ceremonies still very popular, very well attended by or new citizens coming along. So all sorts of good indicators about people wanting to come to Dubbo. But those building approvals, I'm hoping it's an anomaly. I'm hoping that for whatever reason, March was a bit off and it'll pick back up again in April. But it'll be interesting to see how it goes forward. Let's hope so. Mm. Let's hope so. Finally, um, any opposition so far to the Macquarie River Master Plans North and South? I mean, we've had opposition in the past. Has all that settled down? I think there's still some people who aren't 100% happy with the final plan. What I think has been good is that all the conspiracy theories and all the, there's obviously some corrupt activity and bribes and all sorts oh, of yeah, we've, we terrible have, yeah, accusations, yeah. all that. I haven't heard any good. of that for a few months now. And it was still disappointing. We talked about it at the time. It was still disappointing. All that was thrown around when someone wasn't getting their own way or not getting things going the way they think it should go suddenly. The only reason it must be going that way is because of bribery or corruption or the rest of it. It could just be someone's got a different opinion, which is what it was in this particular scenario. But people were, were getting a bit ahead of themselves, I suppose. So now we've got... A, <laughs> That's we, a nice way of putting it. You ought to see some of, the, some of the information I got here that I suppose to broadcast. Yeah, right. And I'm thinking, oh dear, we have an insurance policy <laughs> uh, for defamation, but I'm not going to try and test it and pay the excess. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think we've gotten to the point now we've got a master plan... And that will sit there with us chipping away a bit of that. It's 20 years before that full plan is realised, and that may well be modified over those 20 years, but at least we've got something now yeah. that's generally acceptable to most parts of the community. There are some people who would like to see 
more in the way of sporting. Some people would see more in the way of trees and natural habitat. Again, I think we've struck a reasonable compromise and it was a good process. And some people said we rushed it, but it still took about 15 months from the beginning to the end of that process. Mm. And from my perspective, that seems like a reasonable length of time, maybe a little bit too long to go through a master planning process. Very quickly, Wellington's got a tree plan. Why hasn't Dubbo? Oh, we've got a tree plan as well. Well, where is it? It's and why is it being in, in, implemented? Uh, well, it is being implemented. And really? It is. That's really? right. <laughs> I, I haven't seen any evidence of it. Well, there are trees around our community. And I'm sure there are. I've noticed that there's a tree out the window here. <laughs> but, but I mean, um, I noticed, I, I read Wellington's tree policy. Yeah, it's very good. And, and again, we've got some good submissions. We've got 14 submissions on that. And this is really, some people in Wellington would say that's catching up to where Dubbo's process is in place. No, so, no, no, no. You're not going to get out of those saying it's catching up. No, you're not going to uh, haunt me on that one. Um, really, our, we've got, all right, I know we've got a tree policy, we've got a tree preservation policy and it's all um, been discussed, This, but nothing much is happening as far as tree replacement is going. Right. And that's only in, in West Dubbo where it's the worst and in East Dubbo where it's the second worst and nothing much is happening. Well, I think... The, in well, South Dubbo, um, trees have been replaced. Why? You know, it, it's not even. And I, I'm not aware of it being uneven, but we've got a target to try and increase our tree canopy, and that takes time for that to happen, but we'll keep working away on that. I take your points, but I, I think it really comes down to just the amount of resources we've got in terms of humans available and in terms of our staff and also just the amount of dollars that we've got. So to process, we'll keep working through. I think we've got some targets there. I think we've got some good staff in there working on it, and we've got a council who is interested in making sure we do increase that tree canopy. Matthew Dickerson, Mayor of Dubbo, good talking with you. Right, thanks, Richard. Okay, and we'll catch up in a couple of weeks after the council meeting, and we'll see what's happened as uh, regarding the resolution of the Macquarie Conservatorium. Hmm, that'll be interesting. It's coming up to 19 to 11. This is DCFM 88.9.